Thank you for joining us in the latest installment of our Artist Talk series. Today, we sat down with Leah McDonald, a BMV artist who is currently featured in our Deeper Look exhibition alongside Mary Sterner Lawson. McDonald, based in Philadelphia, has enjoyed a long and varied career path within the arts. She uses a photogestic mixed media approach, combining photographic and caustic and collage techniques to create figures in surreal environments. All of the encaustic pieces mentioned in the interview are available for purchase in the gallery and on our website www.vemviartgallery.com. And with that, please enjoy this interview with Leah McDonald. Hello everyone, I'm currently here sitting with Leah McDonald, part of our Deeper Look exhibition. Uh, Leah, thank you so much for joining us today. We're happy yeah, to talk pleasure. with you. Yeah. Um, yeah, so jumping right into it, your current exhibition here at VemV is titled Deeper Look. Can you give a little overview on what your collection within this joint exhibition is about and how it relates to the title? Um, yeah, I mean, I think that the, my, my work is very process based because of the materials that I use. So I'm combining photography and encaustics. And um, my most recent work has been looking closer and deeper at for me, what's in focus, right? What part of the photographic image is in focus or the surface in general? Because encaustics is a very layered surface. So I think of the work in terms of the layers and then also the visibility of sort of what's behind the wax and maybe what's in front of the wax. So it's sort of a deeper look at how to use materials and how to create sort of depth in a two-dimensional space. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And kind of going into that, you describe your style particularly as photogestic, which is that combination. Mm -hmm. Could you kind of describe to the viewers what this means in a little more detail and how you kind of discovered this fusion of mediums? Oh my God, this is so great. Yeah. So I've been, so I'll just give you a little bit of history, a little kind of like fast forward. Um, I'm a photographer in theory. I mean, a, in education, I might be a fan, MFA in photography. And I've been a professional commercial photographer. I've owned my own book company. I've owned my own studio. I freelanced. So I've really been working as a freelance artist and art educator my whole life. Mm -hmm. But in college and graduate school, um, for those of you, you know, who have gone through art education systems, you find that you're um, controlled or, or, or your work is affected by the people around you. So for me, I was the quote unquote rebel. So I wasn't part of like the current trend. Mm -hmm. I was opposite of the trend. So for me, I was like, oh, okay, well, if I'm going to be like an outlander and be over here by myself, it's like, well, what else can I do to be more outlandish? So I was always really pushing my mediums to find like surprises, accidents, um, mixtures that worked well, that were interesting. Um, I really always wanted to take, you know, go dive deeper into possibilities of both chemical, um, really, or al I call it alchemy, right? Like, so sort of like science factors that create beautiful things without control, like sort of like pushing the limit. Mm -hmm. So I started putting wax. I, I actually first collaged my photographs with, uh, I always joke with, this is, when I teach it with wax paper, like cut right kitchen wax paper. And I just really love that look of sort of like being able to control the visibility of the image. So I would cover the photos with the wax paper or tissue paper and then peel them back. So I really like that kind of control and sort of give and take of what was revealed, what you could see and what you couldn't see, right? So mm -hmm. these are also concepts used in photography with shallow depth of field or blur and in the view camera, which is also something I use, you can tilt and shift the planes of the camera to control the focus, right? So like part of the image can be in focus and then part can be out. So those are some of the things that I really like to look at. And then I like black and white photography, but the encaustics allowed me to add layers of color too and other textures or designs or mark making. So I sort of rebelled against, um, you know, what the current trend of my MFA program was and sort of went way out on this limb and was like, well, I'm going to develop these alternative photographic processes or altered surface photographs 
that over the years and just recently photogestic came together being like a kind of merger of photo photography and caustic and sort of that very physical contact and expression that comes from me when I'm working on the images. Whenever people come into the gallery, I always tell them that you can almost get lost in each one of your pieces of art because there's so many different things going on. And I feel like every time I look, I like find something that I didn't see the first time. Well, right. And it's been so interesting too, when you follow like a medium or you, you know, I kind of, I mean, not, not to say like, you know, I think every medium has like newcomer, like new things, like technology changes a medium or techniques or other artists you learn about. And now with the internet and Instagram and all the YouTube videos, we're all sharing all this information. So I feel like my career kind of fast forward and in the last couple of years, going to like a major encaustic conference and meeting a lot of encaustic artists. And then what happens is you take your technique or process and you go, oh, well, wait, I could add that or I could add that or I could add, so it's been a lot of growth in the last couple of years. And one of the nice things is just, um, I learned how to print on a, like a lighter weight paper. Mm -hmm. So now I have images, used, the images used to always lay on the back, closer to the panel, and then the wax would go on top, and then designs and drawings or whatever. And now I'm able to put an image in the back as well as images in the front with sort of wax layers in between. So it's been pretty exciting. Yeah. Backtracking a little bit, you've described earlier that you've kind of done a little bit of everything, getting your um, degree in photography and owning the art studio and things of that nature. Could you give us a little bit more background on your development as an artist from kind of the start and what kind of inspired you to pursue this field? Um, yeah, I mean, it was interesting. I mean, as a young person, I was always like art and animals, right? So like I loved horses and animals and I always have loved art. So. Um, I think, you know, I, maybe I like was you're growing up, you, you know, you kind of go like, oh, these, these two directions and I'm still very much the same as, a, as I was as a child. I'm still, my life is filled with art and animals and really my career has been nicely kind of, um, whatever I've done professionally or artistically has also been filled with teaching experiences, right? Mm -hmm. So I come from a family of teachers and teaching has, um, just kind of always been a way that I could share what I'm doing in art and make a living and sort of, you know, experience myself and also really develop the work. Because when you're like a college level teacher, your students, you're encouraging them to create bodies of work, but you also are creating bodies of work to like set that example. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, my, my art career is just kind of, it's just sort of been like a, a path, right? Like one thing sort of led to, to the next. I mean, I definitely started out early in life wanting to be a documentary, like street photographer, hmm. which is so ironic because now I do like very like like new, you know, figurative work and new, it's like so. I guess when I got to art school, I went to a very very I would say traditional art school where we had to learn all of the mediums, including like we had to be proficient in painting, proficient in sculpture, printmaking, film photography so I think that really encouraged me to be like art artsy you know like like find a find a topic that was important to me as an artist and, and develop a body of work about it finish finish a body of work then be like make a book you know like that whole process was kind of ingrained in me as a, at a in a college at that level so now every time I'm like okay I'm developing a body of work I'm creating an exhibition you know titling it's so it sort of just became a, a, pra a practice, like a routine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And kind of going back to how you <clears throat> grew being a teacher, all I think all of the artists I've interviewed so far have all had educational experiences as teachers. And so it's interesting to hear how much being an educator influences your own art. I think that's just an overarching theme with everyone, you know? I think it's probably, I mean, I don't know how anybody could work like a non-artistic job and then come home. I mean, maybe, but that works for some people. Like for me, my whole life is my art, like my house. Like, I mean, I just recently uh, produced a 70 imaged photography show and my 
whole living room was my framing. I mean, I framed 70 pieces. So like literally, you know, I have a studio outside. I have a studio. Up. I mean, I think that for me, like the artist lifestyle, the life, it, it's just, it's, my whole thing it's not like it's not compartmentalized like two days a week I'm in my studio mm -hmm. so it's, it's nice for me to just feel like I'm truly myself and but I do like different I have different job like employment jobs where I apply those different skills that are all me the artist absolutely um yeah. so kind of looking at this body of work in particular um there's this recurring motif of flower and female imagery yeah in all of almost all of these pieces what do they represent within your art and what kind of draws you to these depictions when you create um i think i'm still like in a transition so if you look if you research my my work like in 2010 i had a major retrospective of all nude female figures and that work was very focused on social and political um, body image issues. So I've done very deep, deep thinking and processing and digging to the female figure, to working with women who've suffered trauma, to empowering body image, and really trying to help people use art and photography to express themselves, share their traumas and tragedies, and overcome them in mm -hmm. joyful ways. I feel like I'm trying to kind of maybe even as I age on and get older, you know, maybe move to more abstract and less narrative work so that you're not looking at the work, absorbing, you know, a story specific to any person, but more a, a, a wider um, universal feminine joy, you know, of rebirth, of birth, of sort of the things that nature inspires us, of imperfection of color um and maybe happier like just happier um more uplifting growing those types of you know feelings because i've done a lot of the hard heavy lifting in mm -hmm. terms of um disenfranchised social aspects people with physical disabilities and traumas and um pain right so I think that this floor work, I also too really love the surrealists, like um, Dorothy Tanning or fantasy work. And I have, I think like a childhood poem that's about flowers. Like it's the weirdest thing. Like I had this like poem in my head before I could even like write. And it's about this, like your soul and sort of flowers and nature sort of being like this thread that inspires us consistently to continue on and go through cycles of maybe ups and downs in our lives. So kind of another question relating to this collection within Deeper Look, um, the color palette throughout this is, is stunning. All of the colors are so beautiful and they're kind of are overarching throughout this exhibition. Um, how do you kind of choose what colors? And I know it's a very detailed process of creating these layers. Where does that sort of decision making come into your process? It's so intuitive, like it's just, it's just intuitive. I don't really plan it. Like there are so many parts of me that like want to organize myself. So, but I'm like this type of person that I have to go from like, I have to have a little bit of organization. Most of my organization comes in my editing the photographs, narrowing them down to a couple images. So if you really look closer at the images and the pieces, there's probably only about five to six photos in the entire show. Mm -hmm. So the photos are repeated. So one of the reasons that I do that as an art educator too, is I sort of believe in that mathematical equation sort of thing or science variability that like, if you use so many variables, you're never going to have a consistent result. Mm -hmm. So I narrow myself down to like a certain, I call them like handful or field or batch of photographs. I print them in multiple sizes and then I just go out to the studio and I sort of, and I collage. So I do a lot of collage work. That's a big, big aspect of my paintings is the base collages where I cut up the photos, I layer them. I do a lot of um, masking with white, blacks and whites. Mm -hmm. So I create this really intricate and very um, sort of fun and super creative collage base. And then I start painting. 
the cool thing about this particular show is that the final layers of paint went on while I was in Kingston, New York mm -hmm. at the RNF studios. And RNF is a manufacturer of encaustic paint. They're actually a company that, and they have studio space that you can rent and work there. So I was totally like kid in the candy store. I mean, I had every color that they make at my, at my disposal. That's and it awesome. was really hard. I mean, you just want to be like, grab this, grab this. So, but I think that my colors um, for this show were like this brand new, like this really nice lavender, kind of a salmon-y pink. Yellow mm. has been a new color for me. Um, I don't know why I've always kind of been afraid, afraid of yellow. But you have to remember, I was a black and white photographer, you know, for so many years. So I always say I'm really shy about color. And I can remember, you know, 10 years ago, people would go, oh, we just want more color in your work. And I'd be like, I'm not ready yet. Like, I'm not mm -hmm. ready yet. Um, but now I think I'm getting better, you know? I'm just having fun with it. I, I don't really know. I never know how anything's going to turn out, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, well, it all has turned out wonderful so far. This uh -huh. show is beautiful. Um, kind of to, to wrap things up a little bit. Sure. What do you want visitors to take away from this exhibition as a whole when they walk in and look at your work? Oh, that's really hard. I mean, um, I want the work to take people places. Like I, I love, I love empowering like imagination and creativity and, um, also joy and intuition. So those are like, like if people feel moved or like they've, um, you know, stepped into my imagination on some level, even, you know, that, that sort of leaving your reality and stepping into this realm of, of dream space or other possibilities. If I can take, if the paintings take people there or uplift their, you know, uplift them or give them, make them feel good because they're pretty, those are the kinds of things I, I would like people to take away. But I, I, I like to evoke emotion and imagination.